it is your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on what does it mean to enable a narcissist or enable a psychopath. And yes, I realize I'm putting the two categories of personality disorders into this video and even though they are very distinct in nature, I want to focus in on the experience of the enabler someone who is allowing the relationship to continue when it is not in your best interest. Perhaps when you know better or subconsciously, you should know better, but you do not let go. You hang on tight. You live, you continue to live in the past. You continue to live in the love bombing stage. You continue to live in the illusionary stage or really in the, the projection of what you want in the relationship versus what you're really um, obtaining or taking away in the relationship. And that can be the experience of enabling. And enabling can take um, many varieties and we, we also hear about enabling of alcoholism, drug addicts, things of this nature. And enabling really takes place when you're not able, even psychologically able, oftentimes people are not linguistically able, consciously able to determine and articulate what they are going through with this um, with this person or this relationship, this parent, this sibling, this lover, this husband, um, this boss. They, they do not, they're not able to understand this type of relationship. They've never experienced it before perhaps. So they allow it to happen. They have um, a high tolerance for pain. They put up with uh, neglect. They put up with judgment. They put up with sarcasm. They put, they put up with the devaluation and discard stage of the relationship after the initial love bombing stage or initial onset or experience entry into the relationship. And enabling basically means when you are allowing it to occur. In fact, you might even be contributing to the abuse or contributing to the harm that you are receiving on the other end. And enabling, as I mentioned, it oftentimes take place unconsciously, subconsciously, or immaturely in your experience with other people. In other words, you have not encountered this previously in your life, so you don't know how to cope. You don't know how to stand up for yourself. You don't know how to articulate what you're going on. So you might lash out with a lot of anger. You might be very reactive to this person. You might get caught up in what I call a lot of conflict consciousness where you might start fighting. You might start yelling. It's bringing out the worst of you. Um, or furthermore, you're just, you know, you have a very tight lip and you just don't say anything. You just keep taking it. You just don't know how to react. So you don't react. So you become, you have this very callous shell of tolerance where you basically just keep allowing um, this person to continue their, uh, their narcissist ways their psychopathic ways. Let's just call it um, narking or um, psychopathing, um, kind of like drugging. They're, they're continuing in their abuse, which means um, the pathological lying, um, the um, splitting behavior where they're talking about you behind your back and acting like they never said this. So they're trying to gaslight you, make you doubt yourself make you um, disoriented where you don't really know even what is in your best interest so you feel that the best place for you is to be underneath them. You are constantly like a support or support staff almost to these types of people. In fact, oftentimes I've heard people who have been in relationships with narcissists or psychopaths that they feel almost like an employee. They feel that disconnected. They feel like they actually have to almost work for them in almost an employer employee type of relationship where it's it's not about being close it's not being about intimate it's not being about sharing love and sharing a future together and sharing a vision together and going places doing things building things having things creating a family creating a garden creating you know a memoir I'm um, creating a legacy it's about them allowing uh, this person to control events and circumstances according to what's best for them and not what's best for you. So I think what ends up getting confusing for a lot of people in the enabling is that they just don't have the experience to articulate what's going on or they don't know how to move on. They don't know, they, they, their standards have been reduced to be so low for themselves that they feel that they must tolerate 
this behavior and they just let it go. They just let it slide. They don't call it out. They don't say it for what it is. They don't have um, the fortitude uh, to basically say enough is enough. I'm not going to take this. They, they become almost numb. Um, they, became, they become paralyzed. Um, or they become so, they, they constantly analyze things and then can't make a move. They can't make a change. They tend to get too caught up in maybe trying to repair the situation or see things from their perspective. Um, you know, see where I need you to do this. See where we need that. And you try to get them um, convinced that they need to have empathy and to furthermore understand you. But when you're dealing with a person who has a deficit of empathy, an empathy deficit, such as we see with a narcissist or a psychopath, you're basically asking something of a person who is not able to give it based on their personality disorder of lacking empathy. They are not able um, or willing or feel the need <laughs> to meet you in the middle in order to arrive at a sort of common understanding. So there's going to be a real disconnect. There's going to be a real dysfunction and you're not going to feel um, as if you've been heard or validated or understood. And so a lot of people just give up and they continue to tolerate it um, when unnecessarily. So this can be like enabling. In other words, where they just, um, they then make excuses for the person. Oh, this is just their personality. I mean, I've seen it before where um, the narcissist or psychopath is so outwardly abusive um, to a spouse that no one in their right mind, quote unquote, would tolerate it. But yet this person has become such an enabler that they have such a thick skin. They tolerate this and just make excuses away. This is just how they are. Um, they just let it slide. Whereas most people from the outside looking in would say, you don't need to take that treatment. That is just horrible. Um, why don't you put an end to that? Why are you just being a whipping post to this person? And they basically don't really seem to care. Um, and whether, you know, in the beginning of the relationship, it, it might not be an issue, but especially as the relationship continues and they realize that they might hit a rock bottom where they find that this person is cheating, they're stealing money, um, they're outwardly disrespecting them, or they, they now see them, you know, when the mask has fallen and they see that really the relationship has just been an act, it hasn't been one of truth. And then they see, wow, okay, this is, this is not just, you know, somebody who has um, a flaring temper. This is actually someone who has a, a shell, a mask of a relationship and there's no congruence, there's no connection between how they're treating me and how they really feel. In fact, they don't really love me. They're just taking me for this, they're taking me for that. And they really aren't there for me in uh, my time of need or really um, kind of at a heart level, heart space level. And especially moving forward, um, not too many people can live a lie for too long uh, before just the unhappiness becomes unbearable and you have to make a move. So. Um, realize that, um, and you know, emerging out of uh, enabling does take a lot of courage. It does take talking to with people, people who get it, uh, people who understand that when you're dealing with a narcissist or a psychopath, this is not just your typical person. This is a person with a personality disorder and really quite severe pathology, such as in the case of a psychopath, someone who really has no conscience and has an ability to uh, lead double and triple lives. Someone who has uh, no sort of feeling um, or connection um, emotionally with, with really anybody. Um, they don't have loyalty to anybody, any one person or thing. They, they don't have emotional connection to life. They look at things in a much different um, sort of schema, schemata um, or viewpoint than, than most uh, of society. In fact, they have no problem with breaking rules, morals, you know, obligations. I mean, they are just not, um, they just don't have the, the connectedness. They don't have a conscience. They do not have empathy. They are looking strictly to take from people and target them for what they need and have no trouble hurting and moving on. In fact, oftentimes they take a great deal of pleasure from hurting and destroying people. They, they actually, um, I mean, when, we, when you talk about ruining somebody's life, they 
will cal you know deliberately and calculatedly work at that, especially if you're enabling them and you're becoming so naive. Um, you know, you are going to find yourself once you emerge from this and the the mass does drop that oftentimes people are so psychologically um, brainwashed and gaslighted that they really almost come to a point where they cannot function um, after enabling them for so long or lying to themselves for so long they find that they cannot even kind of get back in touch with reality they develop a a complex PTSD um, they become very isolated their thoughts don't be, you know become incoherent um, you know fear and a lot of these other um, you know stress hormones start raging and they can't do everyday things like, you know, eat, cook, drive, work. Um, you know, they become really um, dysfunctional because of this gaslighting and brainwashing is going on where their, their chemicals of, of loyalty and um, their emotions are so um, kind of mixed up that they really don't, they become desensitized to what they need to do. It's almost like a paralysis, emotional paralysis, which can, can occur from living really at the depths of of this um, enabling. So, you know, do have the courage to say, before, you know, my life gets rock bottom, I'm, I'm going to stop. I'm going to disengage. I'm going to emotionally disconnect from this, um, living this lie with this person anymore. I'm now brave enough. I have the courage to see it for what it is and let it go and to know that I deserve better and to know moving forward that that is really where my sanctity and my sanity is going to be. It's it's not going to be found with this person. I, I cannot live in that enabling um, mindset or, or frame of energy or life anymore because it really become it can become quite destructive and devastating to a person psychologically, spiritually, and physically and really remove all that um, natural um, happiness and um, the natural sort of life flow that you have about you that, that does know what to do, that does know what to say, that does have the right standards to enforce, a lot of that becomes obliterated once you are in the depths of enabling. It's peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.